what you're about to experience is a free, worldwide, interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to episode number 181 of Category 5 Technology TV. It's Tuesday, March the 8th, 2011. Nice to have you here. You look like a rock star over there. Thanks. Seriously, that, right off the top, she's doing blue steel. I tried. Fantastic. Bonus. Bring it all or nothing. Yeah. yeah. I'd like to welcome Krista Wells, who's joining us uh, in studio tonight. And uh, you'll be able to kind of talk a little bit about what you do. But uh, Krista is a uh, professional graphic designer here with her Mac. Professional. Yep. To show us how to uh, <laughs> build websites. We're actually starting a series tonight. Uh, we talked about it a few weeks ago where we are taking it right from the get-go, building a website right from graphic design and concept all the way up to programming and actually building it into an actual website. So uh, stick around. That's going to be a lot of fun. And if you have questions, get us in the chat room, category5.tv. Cool? Great. You got everything up and the chat room's rolling by? I think so. I think we're good. Yeah, good, good. Uh, tonight, uh, we are <laughs> going to be explaining to you how you can win that Wirecast 4 broadcast software. Uh, we're finished taking our qualifiers. We've got lots of qualifiers in, and uh, those have been narrowed down. And so we're going to be uh, giving you your chance to vote on who is uh, going to be our winner. Uh, so stick around for that as well. And big news for Pogo Plug, uh, if you're a Pogo Plug fan. That's going to be pretty awesome. Nice to see everybody joining us uh, in the chat room. Yeah. It's rolling by. If you're watching and you're not in the chat room, you can get in uh, at category5.tv and uh, it'd be nice to have you there. And Hillary is also, let's see, Hillary is joining us. Hey, Hill. Hello, world. I am back. Good to be back in the Category 5 land. And let me tell you, people, I've got news for you. Coming up in the newsroom, according to a report, our reliance on GPS units could be a big problem should the network fail. Spotify has announced that it now has 1 million paying subscribers across Europe. The name of next October's release of Ubuntu 11.10 has been announced. Telecom firms TalkTalk Talk and Tiscali have repaid nearly 2.5 million pounds to customers in the UK. And lastly, a high-tech body scanner could eliminate the need for traditional invasive autopsies. So stick around for the latest news from the Category 5 TV newsroom. Interesting. John is asking, Hillary, uh, what happened to the sheet? Where are you at tonight? It looks a little bit different tonight. <laughs> I am constantly on the move, and so my lovely bed sheet backdrop is no more. Um, I have changed cities temporarily because I'm doing an internship at a uh, TV station, so I have moved, and for the next two months, I will be here. So that is why. That's why you see the new decor behind me. Yeah, no, that's, that's great. Uh, and it's so nice to have you joining us, Hillary, through Skype video. Uh, for those who are wondering about, uh, about the quality of that video and, uh, and where she's joining us from, she is uh, there doing her internship. That's really awesome. So this, you say it's a couple months, so is this going to lead to uh, bigger, better things? Or do you, do you know what's, uh, what you have in line at this point? I'm really not sure what's going to happen. I'm just kind of taking it day by day. But um, the purpose of the internship is to gear me towards more reporting aspects. So uh, today I was downtown Toronto shooting some streeters. Tomorrow I'm out doing. So that was you. I heard about that on the that news. Yeah, I know. Kind of a big deal, right? The no, shooting? Yeah. Hillary. <laughs> Terrible. Totally Terrible joking. play on words. But, anyways. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what's going to happen. We'll just see. Cool. I'm winging it. Yeah, keep us posted. Nice to have you here again this week. Uh, we've got a couple of emails that have come in, and I'm not going to burden you with too much over here. So uh, I'm going to hop right into the, uh, to the email box, and you can uh, email us live at category5.tv. We've got one here from James uh, Kieser, who says, I enjoyed learning about Clonezilla during the last two episodes. That's great. Nice that, uh, nice that you enjoyed that feature. Uh, it says, I was wondering if it would be possible to clone a DVR hard drive for the purpose of installing a larger drive. It's a Magnavox such and such. Uh, I would love to replace the 160 gigabyte drive with a 320 or 500 gigabyte drive. Would using Clonezilla and removing the drive and installing it in an external drive housing work to transfer it to a larger drive? Also, do you know if the DVR would recognize the larger drive and be able to use it? 
Thanks uh, for your thoughts and help that you may have. I really enjoy watching your show. And this comes from James. Thanks, James. Um, basically, first question there. I'm just going to go back over the email. Is it possible to clone a DVR, <coughs> pardon me, a DVR hard drive for the purpose of installing a larger drive? Yeah, it is. Absolutely should be. Uh, because that hard drive is, is really just a computer hard drive, so you'd be able to clone that with CloneZilla. And our demonstration, uh, for our demonstration, we uh, backed up our drive uh, through the network. You could, however, as you say, put that drive into an external enclosure, do it through USB or something along those lines. Uh, and then putting it onto that bigger drive, you'd be able to then take that drive, put it in <laughs> into your device, and uh, be good to go. So uh, that should work. Uh, different devices will have different limitations. With a 500 gigabyte drive, it's not too likely that that's going to exceed any limitation of a modern piece of hardware. Um, but uh, you may want to check the specs of your actual DVR just to make sure that it's compatible. All right. So I hope that uh, hope that helps. I think it's a yes and a yes. Is that a slam dunk or what do you call that? Home run or <clears throat> three strikes you're out? John, you're not being very helpful here. <laughs> Double positive. I like that. Could you kindly pass me the bowl of candy? Yes. I got this crazy cough. Thank you. That's what I'm good for. It helps. <laughs> I've always wanted somebody to hand me the, the candy, the, the candy yeah. bowl. Eric's always just such a snob about it. Yeah. Well, Tuesdays are free, so. I, I'd ask him for it. And he'd push it. He'd knock it on the floor, <laughs> dump it everywhere. <laughs> we miss Eric tonight, but uh, thinking of him, he is playing hockey, I believe. As always, on a Tuesday night, having a good time, I hope. <laughs> Kerbuntu says, hey, Robbie and Eric. Let's see here. I have an ongoing problem. Whenever I run VirtualBox, OpenOffice will crash if I try to use it. Strange. It will also crash after VirtualBox is closed if OpenOffice was open, but I don't use it while VirtualBox was open. Happily, open office uh, recovery is excellent, of course, uh, so only my pride is hurt when this occurs. And it's also kind of frustrating, for sure. Let's see. Using Ubuntu 10.04, 64-bit, VirtualBox 4.04. Um, just read in here. Version which comes straight from Oracle rather than the repository. Um, OK, I see. You're using the non-free version. That's fine. OpenOffice.org 3.2. I've never had that actually occur. I'm going to actually try to emulate the, the problem that you're experiencing there. I'm going to just bring up an instance of each. And if anyone in the chat room has ever had something like that happen, please let us know. Here we go with OpenOffice 3.2. I think our specs are fairly similar as far as the software goes except that I'm on 32-bit. But other than that, we should be pretty close. There it goes. And I'm using 4.04, .04, release 70112. So pretty similar. But if I close out of VirtualBox, it's not doing anything to OpenOffice. So I want, there's got to be something up with your OpenOffice install. Mine here is 3.2.0, so just kind of out of the box. And no kind of issues there whatsoever. So anybody in the chat room encounter that? Anybody saying anything in the chat room there, Krista, that uh, they've had that kind of thing happen? What you could do, just one suggestion I would try, is hop into terminal. So I'm going to go applications, accessories, terminal. And from my terminal, I'm going to do, do two things. First thing I'm going to do is go VirtualBox, capital V, capital B. And that's going to launch VirtualBox, OK? But what it's going to do is behind that, in the terminal, are any kind of error codes. They're going to be output there. Then at the same time, bring up another terminal window. And we're going to go. I'm not sure what the command is for open office. Never. Let's try open office. No. Okay, so let's go like this. Right click on my menu, edit menus. Office, open office word processor. 
O office. It's the command that I want. That's gonna launch open office. There we go. Text document, whatever. There. So now I've got these two windows open. Oh, an open office went right back there. Hopefully that's going to show you if it does crash, if there's anything weird that's gone on there, because we've r run it through the terminal, so therefore it's going to output anything to the terminal that uh, if there's an error. I'm not sure if we could emulate something like that. If I close this, it probably it won't tell me anything. But in, a, in an event of a crash, you should get some kind of output from the terminal. Give that a try. No other feedback in the chat room about that one? A little bit odd? It's so over my head, I don't know. <laughs> itty bitty fonts on this Mac here. Itty bitty fonts. Don't make fun of the Mac. I'm not making fun of the Mac. Don't. But can you read that at home? Seriously, how do, how do you honestly do that? Is that normal? Yeah. Huh? Is that Good not eyesight? normal? Yeah. Good content. That's not really normal. I mean, if I want to, if I want to bring up my chat room, I'm pretty sure most people can almost read that. And if not, I can. Can you do that? Sure. We're just having a little bit of a, a Mac versus a... <laughs> Look at that. There. Oh, Control Plus is her, is her Zoom. <laughs> I don't even... What is it? It's not Control Plus, is it? No, I'm just using this awesome trackpad. That's all. Is that what it is? It's good. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, good guy. Everybody making fun of my age in the chat room. Fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> We're going to get to uh, make fun of your Mac a little bit later on in the show. Good. Yeah, so, I look forward to that. Good. Okay, Pogo Plug. I had a cool little call. Speaking of Mac and Apple and this kind of stuff, I do have an iPod Touch. It's good. Yes. It's good. Uh, a little bit cool. A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. This is the gauge of, I'm a little bit cool. It's, it's, did I mention it's an iPod Touch 4? No. With the dual camera. Impressive. And I think it's turned off right now, so it doesn't really do much. <laughs> that was smart. Um, I had a Skype call today with Pogo Plug. Uh, are you familiar with Pogo Plug? Um, only the little bit I've used with you, actually. Okay. It looks like this. You've never actually physically seen it, have you? No. So it's like this. Nice. And you plug your external hard drive into it. Krista's mm -hmm. actually shared uh, visual, like, Photoshop files and stuff through this before, because it gives us a way to transfer big files really, really simply. So for, you know, a little bit of money, you, you're able to share this thing, and there's no monthly fees or anything like that. So I had a talk with them, and uh, they have some very very exciting news coming up this week uh, on Thursday. So make sure you're following me on Twitter. It's twitter.com slash Robbie Ferguson. And then also um, you can join us uh, at newsroom.category5.tv. As soon as the embargo is up and the uh, information can be released, I'm going to be sharing that with you. But I tell you right now, very exciting stuff. I know that, uh, that you as viewers are going to be very excited about what, uh, what Pogo Plug is going to be offering. But that said, I'm not going to wait until Tuesday to tell you about it. So make sure you check out our website on thir uh, Thursday morning. That is March the 10th. Uh, Thursday, uh, it will be at newsroom.category5.tv or on my Twitter feed. Cool? So we're going to look at... Uh, I, I kind of want to give a fair amount of time to creating a website today. <laughs> What's that? Done yeah, it's just that I look kind of like, a chipmunk. like I got like I got like yeah. the, the the things in my cheek here. It's all good. Just kinda, maybe one of these days we'll like take it and just do that. Is it fluffy bunny marshmallow trick? Or something? Sure. Yeah. You guys know what yeah. I'm talking about, right? Yeah. yeah. Or do you? <laughs> Don't know. The if kids I want know to. what I'm talking about. <laughs> Where they take a bunch of a bag of marshmallows and they just shove them in their mouth until they can't talk and they have to say something about a fluffy bunny. Oh. And the That'd marshmallow is spitting everywhere because anyways. <laughs> so just tell us a little bit about what it is that you do and uh, and and then we're gonna take a look at actually developing a website tonight. Okay. So what I do, um, it's kind of a broad spectrum. Uh, so technically my title is graphic designer. Um, and what that entails is everything from billboard design, logo design, brochure design, business card design, um, website design, um, pretty much anything that you see a visual, I can create. So 
We use our excellent Photoshop Adobe CS programs. And um, we should have had a disclaimer these. at the beginning of the show. What about Mac? She's going to be talking about Mac. Mac. Pro, Pro Mac. She's going to be talking about Photoshop. She believes in non free. <laughs> she endorses it. She supports it. She promotes Purchase. it. And uses it. Next week, you realize we're going to be redoing this whole thing in the GIMP. You really should. Hey. There you Just go. make sure I'm not around. Okay. So, so with that, like, is there? How long have you been doing this? Like, um, I've been doing the actual graphic design portion for. I guess about three years now, yeah. professionally. Um, before that, I kind of tinkered a little bit. Um, so is but it, yeah, so about three years with it, the programs and everything. Is it largely like an experience-based profession where, you know, you get better and better and better as you? It, it really well. It's one of those things where, um, you can be born with a talent, mm -hmm. um, but you you do need like the the skill set behind it, the schooling and the and everything like you that to get use better. The yeah. How do you use your Photoshop? Exactly. Um, so yeah, it, it does help to have um, the talent, and it does help, help to have the schooling, but to have both at the same time is kind of where you get your great designers, um, opposed to those people who can just create logos, great designers. Cool. Um, yeah, so it's really not that complicated, it's just fun, it's art, art for a living. Yeah, I guess so. that's, the, that's <laughs> the fun thing about that kind of work, is that you're doing something that you basically probably grew up loving. Yeah, exactly. Like I think of my daughter who is drawing all the time. So I can see her using something she like this. She can be like me. There you go. Yes. <laughs> you, you can train her up. She's, she's got the uh, Wacom Intuos 4 tablet here, um, which yeah. you can't really see. I don't know if you can hold that up. Yeah. It's a beautiful tablet. It's uh, not clean very well. But it's great. I highly suggest it. So this is, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with the tablet, it's like a digital pen. This one doesn't use batteries, does it? No, no, it actually plugs in by USB onto your computer. But the pen itself is actually powered by, by the tablet. hovering over the tablet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So no having to change batteries or things like that. Accuracy-wise? No, it's wise? fantastic. Oh, it's great. It's got, I don't remember exactly what all the specs are, but um, pressure and everything, sensitivity. It's like so if you're in, pressure points. Yeah, if you're in Photoshop and you're painting a picture, you can, um, you don't have to change your brushes, you don't have to change your opacities, it just all does it for you according to pressure, so it's fantastic. Do you use the different nibs? Um, no, you not so much. You but no. it does include, Yeah, it does like come brush. with them, it comes with like, like three or four different time or different kinds, but mm -hmm. yeah, I just tend to stick with the one. Cool. That's the Wacom Intuos 4. I just wanted to kind of just express what it is that she's using here, but uh, we'll have a link to that product uh, in the show notes for episode number 181. So with this, you're basically controlling it like a mouse. Yep. But then artistically, you're able to bring up Photoshop and just draw away. Yeah, exactly. It's like I'm drawing on a sheet of paper, um, but the paper is on my computer screen. So learning curve-wise, because you're seeing what you're doing up here, but you're actually doing it down here, was that difficult? Um, it took about a week to kind of master it. Yeah. yeah. Wow. But after that, it's it's hard to go back to a mouse after. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Could you actually demonstrate for us a little bit about uh, what, what you do with the tablet? or Demonstrate. Well, just maybe bring up Photoshop and we can see uh, a little bit about... Sure. See, she's working this thing just like it's a mouse. Working away. So you said this is a CS4? This is... Yes, this is a CS4. Um. So you just want me to get into it? Or? Yeah, sure. This is a website that you're working this, on? Um, this what this was just a today? yeah, just a sample of a website that I I did, um, and then just an example of a logo mm -hmm. with a it's just a fake company on here. But so you can do things like that. The logo we actually do in a program called Illustrator, so it's all vector. Um, whereas in Photoshop, we do our websites and our images and stuff because it's rastered. So, if you were to actually, do you want to go ahead and start creating the website? Yeah. Or? Well, and I, I figure there's there's more to just to creating the website than just sitting down and going at it. Like there must be a, a planning process or a, a creative like sit down and and get some ideas. Or mm -hmm. do you just basically you're not using templates, but you're using experience to say, okay, well, this is the kind of layout that we want. We want a menu. We want um, the content. We want big, bright images. Right. Where, well, where does it start for you? There are, 
you, for every website, there's your general. Um, every website has a navigation. Every website has your content. Um, usually has a logo. Usually has some kind of big picture on it. Mm -hmm. um, so we kind of take those, and then what happens is I sit down with a client, and they tell me what kind of feeling they want from their site, or what kind of a business they are, and what they want to portray, and then I take that and. Sometimes I'll have an idea right off the top of my head. Sometimes it takes a little muddling around through some inspiration pieces I've grabbed. Right. Um, but then you take that and you take uh, their their vision for what they want and and um, the pieces of the site, and you just kind of, I guess, so for lack really of a better is, word, mash it, it together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it is very much experience, creativity, and talent. Kind of all combined. Yeah. So it might be good to hire someone like you if we don't have so much talent. It would be. <laughs> right. Or just hire you. Ding, ding, ding. There you go. <laughs> hint, hint. Um, but yeah, I, I've, I guess like if you don't, like I'm, I'm a programmer and I do a lot of programming, but as far as my weak points go, I would say graphic design would be my weak point because I never grew up as the artist in the family, right? Mm -hmm. I would be lost with a pen and paper if I wanted to do a drawing or something like that. So. Which is great for me. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, and right, I'm, well, sure, I'm sure I do some things on sites that as a programmer would drive you crazy. Like, absolutely. As a, as a designer, I love big pictures and I love to make, um, mm. to make the website more complicated as though it's an art piece. So I like difficult navigation items and stuff like so that. You, and do you find that you have to hold back sometimes. for the site so that it can be programmed? Because you don't want it to be a 30 minute download. Yeah, and some things um, where you want the, the text and everything to be readable, um, yeah. so I can't do some really fancy text or font treatments because mm -hmm. then it ends up being a picture and then you can't read it. Right, search engine friendly so, fonts come into play. So it does end up holding back a little bit, but right, right. usually you can work around it. Okay, well if you could take us through a little bit about what it is that you've got going on here. Sure, so this is just a, a sample of something um, I had done. And if we want to go through just quickly kind of how we, we brought it together. So this one here, um, it's made up of different layers. And we take this, and then Robbie would take this afterwards, and then he would slice it all up. So I just have to kind of make the look so that he has something to go by. So if we were to start, we would probably start with a background. I'm going to put a gradient on here. I want to go the other way. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of um, playing around more than anything. I can mess around with a gradient for 10 minutes before I'm actually happy with it. Right. And we're going to do a little bar up on the top here. <clears throat> okay, so that's just our basic background there. And then we have to add in all our stuff that actually makes it a site. So, no particular order. I'm probably a little more scattered than the average website <laughs> designer. It's, it's called artistic. <laughs> yeah. Artistic. That's what my parents told me, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's our logo. So you basically know where you want to go with it, and then you're you're able to basically you're you're putting this together pretty quickly as it is. Yeah. Well, once you sometimes I'll sit down and I'll have a uh, three or four pages of sketches, or or sometimes I just know exactly what I want to do and I just start creating it on the computer, or sometimes I have to sit on the internet for hours and search through posters mm -hmm. and book covers and everything before I get a mm -hmm. an idea of what I should go for. Right. Get that inspiration from other exactly. other people's art. Which is essentially the, our art in its own is imitation. So. See, she does. She does this honestly, John. Like she's playing the piano. She's going is around. That, she's is she's it waving this camera, magic wand. That? No, it's great. But okay, mm. you like, maybe lose train of thought. Oh, I beg. I'm um, sorry. We're gonna throw another background in here. So I'm going to try to be fancy and make this box have rounded corners. Name 
uh, the good old rounded corners in Photoshop. <laughs> Actually, more difficult than you would think. Yeah, did I actually mention that it's a lot easier in the GIMP? That you can right click on your selection and go rounded right I think we're talking about Mac right now. Oh, sorry. Just, <laughs> just don't want to get you confused. Right click, <laughs> rounded rectangle. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to pretend that. Oh, didn't okay, you've blurred it. All right. Uh -huh. Now Control L or whatever it is on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, change your levels. <laughs> you already know this. I don't. Okay, so we'll keep, oops. I don't know what I just All right, so so far in the past 10 minutes, she's created <laughs> a square, and she's uh, she's been able to round that square, and now she's gonna, oh, I'm, I'm, just, I'm not oh, making fun of you, I'm so making fun of Photoshop. Oh yeah, I'm a firm believer in uh, yeah, in the so GIMP is. as an alternative to, to Photoshop, for sure. Oh, I understand. Okay, sorry. You don't understand. I do understand. <laughs> So I'm going to put in our background here, and we're just going to put in a little cheesy wood background. Fantastic. It might take a second. <laughs> and I'm going to take that shape. Das Bomber in the chat room says, Mac, half the computer at twice the price. Hey. I beg to differ. As you think, yeah, I did pay twice the price for this. <laughs> I, I really did. <laughs> but, oh, it didn't brown. Oh, oh I feel foolish. Okay. okay, well, it's going to be a, a sharp edge. Sure, corner. yeah, and we're racing through, of course, because we're limited to the time of the show itself. So. Um, actually, I'm unhappy with that. Okay, well, we're going to live with that. Sure. 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 Okay. So you're creating a mask there, are you? Um, or did you I actually, didn't. Did you I actually it? use a lot of masks, but that was actually a question I have for you. I'm not sure if you can take masks and if they mess you up, because I like to use a lot if of they masks mess in me Photoshop. Up. Well, when you take it from Photoshop <laughs> sure, yeah. and then slice it, I don't know if it translates. Oh. You're gonna have to watch next week because oh, she's gonna have this PSD. Yeah, <laughs> um, no, uh, masks are great. No, I and masks uh, help obviously for me as a programmer helps me to be able to reposition photos. But also, if you want to, for example, uh, if you send me something with a, a rounded header mm -hmm. and, it, and it doesn't have a mask, I'll usually do a control click on the layer, create a mask on that layer, so that I can add other images and then reapply that same mask. Oh, okay. Right? So masks are a good thing? Masks are an awesome thing, yeah. And that, of course, goes for the GIMP as well. The GIMP supports masks. The GIMP mm -hmm. is $1,000 cheaper than Photoshop because it's free. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we are making navigation items and okay. ignoring Robbie's Getting the menu comments. Going. Okay, well, as you, uh, as you get the menu going there, uh, Hillary. <laughs> there she is. I uh, would love to uh, jump into the news. It's uh, just about that time. So if you're uh, if you're good to go, I'm ready to go. From the Category Five TV newsroom, engineers in the UK are warning of our reliance on individual services such as the global posi positioning system (GPS). With the use of space-borne positioning and timing data now widespread, the Regal Academy of Engineering fears that too many applications, such as GPSs, have little or no backup if the systems were to go down. They say receivers need to be capable of using a variety of data sources. Dr. Martin Thomas, who chaired the group writing the report, says, what we're saying is that there is a growing uh, interdependence between the systems that people think are backing each other up uh, and it might very well be that a number of these systems fail simultaneously. It'll cause commercial damage or even loss of life. Ugh. While the researchers say they're not claiming a calamity is around the corner, it is important that governments and users take the issue seriously before it's too late. Online music service Spotify has announced that it now has one million paying subscribers across Europe. News of the milestone comes as Spotify continues a fundraising 
uh, from investors in advance of the launch in the U.S. The company has 6.67 million users, the majority of whom use a free service subsidized by advertisements. Spotify is in the process of $100 million funding round that analysts estimate values the company at around $1 billion. Canonical, the makers of Ubuntu Linux, have always had an affinity for hard to pronounce or at least easy to mispronounce naming conventions. Get ready for this, people. In an announcement yesterday, Canonical Mark Shuttleworth announced that Ubuntu's October 2011 release will be called Wanaric Ocelot, maybe, officially leading the way in bleeding edge Linux technology and hard to say distro names. According to Shuttleworth, one Eric means dreamy, and the combination with Ocelot reminds him of the way innovation happens, part daydream and part discipline. Ubuntu 11.10 will be released this October. After UK telecom firm TalkTalk Talk brought to Scully to telecommunications regulator Ofcom began receiving complaints of customers being aggressively pursued for bills they did not owe. Ofcom said that two firms with their combined user base of 4.2 million customers have taken steps to resolve the problem. Nearly 2.5 million pounds has been paid back to customers who were billed for services which they had previously been canceled. People who have paid erroneous bills since January 1st of last year should automatically receive a refund and anyone affected by the error should contact their credit agency to ensure the damaged credit history has been repaired. Ofcom launched an investigation in July of last year following the complaints. The firms were told to pay compensation by December or, a, or face a financial penalty. All the while, TalkTalk Talk takes little responsibility and blames a new billing system introduced after it brought to Scali in June 2009. And another breakthrough that they already did on Star Trek is fast becoming the talk of uh, diagnosticians this week. In a study that would make Dr. Phlox shrug and say, tell me something I didn't know, full body CT scanners have now been shown to provide 80% accuracy when used to find the cause of death, death using 3D scans of 33 bodies. The scanner detects trauma, fractures, cancers, and produces a 3D image of the dead person's organs that is relayed to an HGTV for examination by a pathologist. Professor Guy Ruddy, chief forensic pathologist at the East Midlands Forensic Pathology Unit said, postmortems are not popular with the general public and are viewed at, with great dis distaste. Great distaste, Ooh. He also added that forensic science was very excited by this new development. You can get the full stories online at category5.tv slash newsroom. The category5.tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributions from Gadget Wisdom Guru and our community of viewers. If you have a news story you think is worthy of on-air mention, send us an email at newsroom at category5.tv. For the category5.tv newsroom, I'm Hillary Rumble. Sorry, Hillary, I didn't catch the name of that uh, new Ubuntu release. What, what was that? Okay, guys, I don't, one Eric Ocelot, I don't know. Ocelot, one, one Eric, I don't know. I don't know. If he wanted something that was going to be kind of sly and yet focused, he should have went with, like, I don't know, obsessed octopus. <laughs> that would have been better, I think. At least pronounceable. At least. <laughs> Thanks, Hillary. Wow. This is Category 5 Technology TV. You'll find us online, www.category5.tv. This is episode number 181, and I'm joined tonight by Crystal Wells, a graphic designer from Barrie, Ontario, and uh, she is showing us how to design a website. We are trying. Yeah, how's it coming along? Um, all right. Yeah? All right, I think. Yeah, so while I was working away here, we just put in our navigation at the top. Um, this blue bar across the center here, and then this white down here where our content's going to be. Okay. And so when you're planning out the navigation, obviously you've sat down with a client, and or if this was your own website, perhaps you've, you've decided, okay, I need home, about me, or about my company, uh, contact us, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Usually they, they already know exactly what it is that they want to say. They want to usually tell a little about, uh, about their company, they want to show what they can do, um, they want people to contact them easily or have an easy way to contact them right. and 
depending on the company, maybe there's a few other um, different kinds of navigation items. But yeah, generally that kind of stuff is all laid out for me. Ideally, it's all laid out for me. <laughs> so we're going to put a little drop shadow here. So this is where, just so you know, this is where the GIMP and Photoshop, their paths stop colliding is when you're using layer effects. Mm -hmm. Because the GIMP doesn't support those Photoshop layer effects. So what she's done there is added the, the drop shadow to the layer in such a way that it's, it's just an effect on that layer rather than a rasterized um, filter that's been applied to the layer. Mm -hmm. It's a lot easier to undo. So it's, it's really a nice feature of Photoshop for sure. Pro Mac? Stop it. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> then something else that we can do here just to make our lives a little bit easier, and I cheat a lot. Um, I want to put some links down here, so I'm just going to steal my main navigation items and rename them. Okay. So could you group those and just re and just? Oh, okay. I see what you're doing. So you're using the, you're creating a sub. Like submenus. Yeah. So um, this isn't a duplicate at the top. Something I guess as a designer that I kind of like to do is when we have a smaller client, I like um, to make their websites look a little bit bigger than they actually are. Mm. So if they only have three pages, um, sometimes it's nicer to look right. like they're a bigger company or have more they going on. They might not on. have a lot of text too. So right? exactly. So even though the links aren't going to separate pages, um, we add additional links on there. I say something a little bit different, maybe it tweaks someone's interest in a different way and then they end up on the same page that's in our main navigation up here anyways. Okay. I, I do that sometimes with images, like I'll, even on our website, something that's on the menu, I'll certainly have uh, another link to that same item somewhere else, but just a little bit differently. You can go to, for example, watch the show, and that's the same, and then you'll see a list of the, fo uh, the, the different episodes, uh, but then you could also just get them right off the front page. Right. Right. So same sort of idea. Okay. So that's all for our navigation. And then for this particular site, I decided to be really cool and put in some Polaroids. So basically, you just make a white background. We're going to place our image. and guesstimate, which I find works the best. And yeah, that's where I want something like this, it's not something that we could really sit down and say, here's how you do it, because it does take that, that talent and the guesstimation, as you say. But that comes from, no doubt, a lot of experience as well. And another awesome drop shadow. Oh, that's cool. And that quickly you're able to get that effect of actually having a Polaroid there. Yeah. Very nice. Because everyone back to the good old days. Yeah, what is it about us regressing like that? It's like, that's what looks cool, is <laughs> a Polaroid yeah. from the 80s. Well, no one actually prints out pictures anymore. They're all on your computer. Who yeah. actually prints them out? That's where we talk about backups. A lot. Right. Yeah. Very important. That's a good point. That's kind of a scary thing. I, I am so afraid of electromagnetic pulses. <laughs> Next year? With the solar flares? Right. Yeah. John just saying, just wait till next year. <laughs> solar flare activity is going to be very dangerous to computer hardware. Okay. Right. 35 millimeter negative slides, Agamotto recommends. That's what we should go with. It's all over my That's head. Cool too. It's just all. <laughs> We're going back too far here, guys. <laughs> Put in a little slogan there. And this is also something else that I'm not really sure is easy for Robbie to do on his end, where I make a 
make things different sizes like this. Yeah. I imagine you can just put like a like a tag around it or something, and then sure. specialize well, the what tag. Are, you're doing what font? Josephine? Yeah, so. I actually stole it off of uh, the Google API. Oh, this is from Google API. Yeah. Okay, well that's good because what you encounter with uh, with the internet when you're coding for the internet is uh, web safe fonts. And if the font is not available as a web safe, safe font, what that basically means is you can be you can trust that everybody in the world has this font installed in their computer. So if you use, you know, a sans serif, well, it's gonna it's gonna work. Or Helvetica is probably on every system uh, as a safe font. But there are um, certain font families that you can use as a programmer, uh, which we'll get into further in the series, so that you understand. Um, what fonts you can and can't use. Because if you use a fancy font, you think, oh, this looks beautiful, it's a nice script, uh, and then you create the website, unless you create that as an image, which is a bad idea for search engine optimization uh, and for load times, screen readers can't read those as well, um, then it's not going to look the same on other com people's computers unless they have that font installed, so it's never a good idea. The Google API allows us to uh, link into a repository of fonts that normally would not be considered web safe and using CSS, it allows us to include fonts like this one um, that are indeed web, like now web safe based on the inclusion of Google's API. Plus that gives us the access to Google's cloud, which basically because they've got so many servers all over the, <coughs> all over the world, you're getting those fonts from their server rather than the user getting the font from your server. So it's super, super fast and it takes bandwidth. Uh, it puts the bandwidth um, on Google rather than on you, and they've got lots of it. So, so yeah, as far as sizing there goes, I would create each line as a span. Looks like uh, We Make and Awesome are probably the same <laughs> size. I think they're approximately. Approximately the same yeah. size, so they'd probably be the same. Um, so I call that a span yeah. ID or a span class of, you know, size one or whatever or something, and then the other one might be a different span but same font or a different right. ID within that span. Right. So, and we'll, we'll cover all this so you'll understand what I'm talking about in future episodes. But So yes, I can work with that, no problem. Great. Because we want to add that to the site. Basically, we'd have that background image, but that text would be actually text. Because you want the search engines to be able to index it. You want people to be able to copy and paste, people to be able to print, uh, things like that. Yeah. Cool. So uh, yeah, this is basically our site. How could you be done so quick? It doesn't have a, like this one has a little more finesse to it, like you can see. Sure, sure. So Didn't it does take more after time you, on, yeah. yeah, so after you, you kind of get everything together, I usually go through and take a couple hours to kind of tweaking and nudging an image right or left and a little bit crazy like that, so. Right. So yeah, that's essentially it. That's what I do. Very cool. If you have any questions for Krista, she's joining us in the chat room right now, category5.tv. It's the Category 5 chat room on Freenode. And of course, you can email us live at category5.tv. We'd love to hear from you. Cool. This is Category 5 Technology TV, episode number 181. Uh, we're talking about Wirecast. Have you heard of Wirecast? I have. You're, you're so new here that you don't know any <laughs> of the stuff that we're using. This software that you see over here on my monitor mm -hmm. is called Wirecast. You can see all the different camera angles. Cool. And uh, as we flip through the different angles, for example, if I want to bring up your Mac, it's just a simple mouse click. Mm -hmm. That's her Mac computer through our network. So there's no, there's no video cables coming out of your computer. We didn't have to do anything fancy other than install Desktop Presenter, which was how easy? Um, it took literally five seconds. Literally five seconds. <laughs> she timed it with the Bring Tim. Approximately five seconds. All right. <laughs> so with that, Wirecast is then able to treat your computer screen as if it were a camera connected to our broadcast system. That's if we, cool. It's very cool. So very quickly, I was able to add that. And then take it one step further and say, OK, now here's a view with us demonstrating the computer screen. I'm pointing the wrong way. I'm pointing it. There it is. There you go. There right. you go. Fantastic. <laughs> and then last week, if you were watching the show, you noticed that we also went so far as to incorporate the green screen, which allowed us to superimpose ourselves over virtual sets as well as in this view, we were able to um, not have the background so that we could actually kind of float over the, uh, the image more effectively without the square around us. <coughs> so Wirecast is a broadcasting suite. It's a recording suite. We're recording to disk right now live. 
uh, as well as broadcasting live to uh, many different distribution servers around the world. And this is all uh, available through Telestream's Wirecast. You can find out more information about the software at cat5.tv slash Wirecast. Uh, but we are giving away a copy. It's worth 400 and f uh, 450 bucks US. And uh, we've got a copy to give away. So what we've done, we took some qualifiers over the past several weeks. And, uh, and we had a lot of qualifiers uh, send in their emails. So we originally were going to start selecting from those. But it was too tough. So what I did is I created a random script that, uh, that picked six uh, of the qualifiers um, emails. And those have been posted directly on our website. So if you hop over to category5.tv, and then now if you click on Interact, and then the Wirecast Contest, it's essential that, uh, that all viewers go through this, uh, because it's up to you now, uh, now that we've randomly selected six of them, um, you're going to be able to vote on which ones uh, you would like to see win. So pardon me, back at our computer. You've got entry one, entry two, and as you click on each entry, read more, you're going to be able to read the actual entry that was submitted. If you like uh, this person and you want, uh, like you want this person to win the software, uh, all you have to do is just post a comment uh, there on their uh, entry. So at the end of it, uh, we're going to take the top three, and we're going to randomly draw from the top three, and that person's going to walk away with a free copy of the Wirecast Broadcasting Suite. Uh, again, 450 bucks available at cat5.tv slash wirecast, and uh, it'll be a lot of fun. If you, if you like, you can also get there quickly uh, just by typing in cat5.tv slash win, W-I-N, not Windows. No. Win, like a prize. Never Windows. And that's going to take you right there <laughs> instantly. Cool? Yeah, what's this about never Windows? You're not anti-Windows, are you? Windows. Fantastic thing about that <laughs> is that you can say it and, and you, you can't get in trouble. I can't get in trouble when you say it. If I said it, oh, I'd well. get in trouble. But you want to try it? No. I it's just got to be careful, right? I'll sound it out. But I can, I can nod. I hear you there, Krista. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else love Windows in the chat room? Love to hear from you. Any questions in the chat room? We try to keep up. <coughs> Nice to see everybody. Hey, Dave. Dave is a huge Windows fan. <laughs> you can tell by the new, new. He can't even type that particular <laughs> word about it. So distraught. He's so distraught about yeah. Windows. I would be. Agamotto makes a point that you know, for games, it's got its place. Sure. <laughs> Math man doesn't know what they're talking about. Just kidding, just kidding. Windows 7 has got, is probably, it's getting them <coughs> at least to the point where it's a little bit better. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So you have fun tonight? I, I did, it was different. Um, hopefully First time on a broadcast? TV? Yes. Yeah? Yep. Cool, yep. did great. I'm, uh, I'm better in front of live people. Live people, like a, like a, like an audience, like or, if they were, you know, like a so group. if no. sixty thousand, <laughs> if sixty thousand people were actually sitting in the room, you'd feel more. That's comfortable. okay. There's eyes to look at. And you think so, eh? Yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> it's a lot easier to look into a camera and say hi. I know you're there. Great to see you, Dave. Chris Reich. Nice to see you. Das Bomber. You are live people, Das, for sure. <laughs> He's offended. Live. He no. expects an apology. Yes, you're live. You are, I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> he thinks, uh, she thinks this is uh, you are all bots <laughs> that I programmed in. This is all just this is a, all fake. a scam it's to a get setup. her to build me a free website. Yeah. I'm on to you. So I'll get you to, to save that as a PSD, mm -hmm. and uh, we're going to actually rip that apart um, oh. on future shows. Okay. For sure. Be Turn nice. that into a, an actual working website. Be kind. Absolutely. Cool. God will love Drawbot. Yeah. No real questions in the chat room, eh? Things wind down about this time of night. Get your questions in through the week live at category5.tv. It's so nice to see you. Nice to have you joining us in the chat room. 
Uh, nice to receive your emails through the week, and I'd encourage you also to submit a viewer testimonial at Category 5 TV. Just click on the Interact menu. And don't forget, I need you to vote for uh, the people for the Wirecast uh, contest. Groovy. Another thing I'll mention about our website that uh, not a lot of people either know about or, or necessarily do that is uh, very helpful. If we jump back to the home page here and you scroll down and you see the episodes here. Now we get a lot of viewers that view the episodes but not a lot of people who actually vote for them. But you see these stars and with these stars you're able to actually vote for your favorite episodes. So even if you catch the show live if, you've, if you're watching this live right now and after the show you, you don't go back to the website until next Tuesday possibly. Um, if you enjoyed the show, check out the website again tomorrow when the, uh, when the episode is up and please vote on that episode so that we have a, a bit of a, a knowledge as to what the favorite episodes are as time goes on um, so that we can order those and have a, like a favorites episode uh, package or something like that. That'd be great. But please do that week after week. It'd be fantastic. Someone's just asking here, actually, um, what we do with the, the output file once we're done creating something in Photoshop. Um, sure. So I'm not exactly sure if you mean um, once we're done and where, where does it go? Who do I send it to? Wondering or? if it's a ping. Uh, is this Agamotto? Just wondering if, it, if it's like what format. So. Oh, I would just send it to Robbie as a Photoshop. PSD. Yeah. Because what we want is we want to still have access to those layers. Uh, in GIMP, it's uh, an XCF file. In Photoshop, it's a PSD. Um, GIMP can open uh, Photoshop files. Photoshop can't open GIMP files because GIMP is better. Um, Have you thought about why it's named GIMP? That GNU Image Manipulation Program. You didn't know that, did you? Freudian She's like, oh, I thought it was just dumb. <laughs> I had him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Photoshop files, PSDs, that includes all the layers, all the uh, like vector stuff that's that's incorporated into the file in such a way that you can open it up again and then you're back to working on the layers and you haven't lost anything. As soon as you save it as a ping, unless you're using fireworks, uh, which not a lot of people do, uh, you're not going to get any layers. The ping is like a flattened, it's almost like a JPEG in that it's a flat image, you can no longer edit those layers, um, so it's really, really hard to go back and change things. So we save it as a PSD, it becomes a master file, and then if we need to change a font, if we need to change one of the graphics, um, it's easy to go back and do that. But uh, Krista was mentioning earlier about uh, how I'll slice up the PSD file and turn it into a website. We're going to be dealing with that over the next couple of weeks. That does involve choosing what uh, portions, we call them slices, what portions of that image, what portions of that PSD we're going to convert to PNG or uh, JPEG. And again, we'll be dealing with the differences between the two and why you would choose one or, or the other and how we would actually go about programming that. So it'll get uh, pretty in-depth, uh, but I think you're going to have a lot of fun, and I hope that you're able to join us. Uh, very cool. If you are watching, uh, even after the fact, and you think, hey, I've got some questions about uh, web design and uh, how, this, how this can actually, you know, how I can use this information, then pop us an email live at category5.tv, and we'd love to uh, incorporate your question into the show next week. Cool. Uh, Gadwill asking if uh, when you vote for a Wirecast entry, do you have to include a website with your comment? No, that's optional. Um, you just need to, um, I think there's a couple of things. It'll tell you what ones are required, but website is definitely optional. Cool. We've got like uh, five minutes left. If anyone has a quick question in, in the chat room that, uh, that would fill up that time, that's great. This is a live broadcast uh, at the time that we broadcast this every Tuesday night at 7 o'clock Eastern. Uh, so it's your chance to get questions in, and, and uh, we're here to answer those questions for you as best as we can. Um, Invisible Mutant, that's a cool name, yeah. has a, just wants an explanation between vector and uh, raster. Is it okay to give a quick? Go ahead, yeah. Great. So um, to kind of put it simply, uh, a vector based is done in a program for Adobe done in Illustrator. And what that means essentially is that it's not based on little tiny pixels. So you can make it as big or as small as you need to without losing any quality. So 
if you I made a little tiny one inch logo in Illustrator, I could blow it up and put it on a billboard without losing any of the quality. Whereas if you do a logo in something like Photoshop, it's based on pixels. So that's when your images start to look fuzzy or you start to see little squares on them as because Can't make it bigger. Yeah, basically. exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So we use Photoshop or a raster program just for um, things like pictures or websites or stuff like that, things that you don't need to resize. Oh, up. Yes. Yes. Don't need to size up, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you can resize down and you don't lose any quality. It's the going up where okay. vector comes in. And then uh, the, the little portrait I have on my site there for Greg in Texas um, was <coughs> done in Illustrator. That's vector. So was it the I same can, hat? I can make that as huge as I want. Was the portrait the same over. hat? Uh, you're wearing um, a hat in the portrait, aren't you? It might be a different one. I have about five fedoras. Similar. Oh, that's your computer. I'm getting confused. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's my thing. <laughs> I needed a thing, so I went to a hat shop and bought a hat. I, th I did this on purpose. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Sure. Good. Looks interesting. It does. <laughs> Greg in Texas, I believe the answer to that would be yay. Invincible Mutant. Nice to see you. <laughs> One of our Pogo Plug winners. Cool. All right, gang. It's been so much fun having you here tonight. Uh, I, again, encourage you to check out our website, category5.tv, and uh, there's, there's so much there, and, and the, uh, the, now it's season four is, uh, is available there for you. If you want to catch up some of the, uh, the older episodes of the show, we've got RSS feeds to be able to subscribe to those, or you can just stream them directly off of our website. Or if you're using a mobile device like the uh, iPhone or iPod Touch, uh, to name drop a couple that you'll recognize. And then Android devices. <laughs> Uh, for example, or uh, pretty much any device that I've heard that's been tested, Blackberries, uh, HTC devices with Android, uh, Windows 7 phones, they're all working with our mobile site. It's mobile uh, mobile.cat5.tv, and that will uh, allow you to watch uh, all of uh, the episodes for the past year as well. So check that out. Cool. Oh, well, it's been fun having you here, Krista. That was fun. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me. And uh, you're not on Twitter, so people can't I'm not on, on Twitter. Twitter. I'm sorry. So if you want to get a hold of Krista with your questions about graphic design, uh, you can email us live at category5.tv, and we'll make sure to pass those along as well. <laughs> All right. Have a fantastic week, everybody. John, you have fun tonight? I sure did. <clears throat> he sure voice. did. <laughs> he, he lost it so right there fun. just as you tried to answer. I lost my voice. There you go. <laughs> have a great week, everybody. We'll see you next Tuesday night. See ya.